Welcome and thank you for watching this presentation of conducting secure online exams using iPad. My name is Dave Saltmarsh, JAMP's Educational Evangelist, and I'm joined today by Nick Thompson, our Education Solution Manager. Nick will be helping me out in the background and joining in when we start to answer questions at the end. Regarding online assessments, today we're going to talk about how to prepare for online testing using the iPad, how, to, how teachers can quickly and effectively lock a student's iPad into a desired app remotely, and conduct secure, securely and easily with confidence. How to prepare for the testing and getting ex, uh, the exams out to students or the exam apps, the quizzes, informative assessment apps is important, as important as that need of those teachers. And again, trying to do this with a lot of flexibility and where we can help reduce some reliance on boots on the ground group by IT. And as I mentioned, securely and with confidence. We've committed to using the iPad to conduct large scale exams and to ensure users are secure. Today's technology landscape, we need to protect the digital environment and that's paramount. The stakes and the number of students in the digital classroom is getting higher and higher. And large scale testing requires advanced coordination, both in time that's time consuming and complex. The adoption of the iPad technology uh, can ease these pain points so teachers, students, and IT managers alike can focus on one thing, improving learning. In our webinar today, conducting online exams with iPad in a safe environment and secure environment, we'll discuss the obstacles and the solutions to the common challenges associated with implementing the new technology. The goal, primary goals we have here are to put the right tools in the hands of the right people so that we can ensure this consistency, quality, and scalability. The online assessments on a grand scale are being conducted primarily around Common Core State Standard Testing or State Decided Testing. Smarter Balance is one of those examples of the high-end high exams. Also, we're seeing the routine tests and quizzes being conducted in the classrooms every day, whether it's by math teachers or language arts teachers, they're looking for some of these same secure environments as the high stakes exams are doing. In addition, the formative assessment or checking for understanding is just as important to be able to quickly and easily transition a student from a, a group-based activity, perhaps to a, an app that can get a check for understanding and that learning continue without too much delay. The challenges are the, primarily the security. How to do that so that we can ensure that when, when necessary, students are restricted from getting out onto the internet, uh, being able to use communication tools. The other big piece of this is to large scale support in simultaneous testing across a district within dozens of classrooms within a school. IT can only be in so many places at one time. And a few years ago, it was really reliant upon them to be in the testing rooms, sometimes acting as a proctor, but troubleshooting and even getting things up and running. And can we add to that, creating a uh, environment, fostering a positive situation where students are comfortable so they can perform at their best? Adding to that as an and is flexibility. We need to realize that on a given day, not all students show up for the exams. And we do need to be able to easily create uh, uh, ad hoc testing environment, be able to do makeups and retakes, and at the same time, be ready on the fly to be able to adjust to the little hiccups that come around sometimes. You know, we shoot to try to do things as best we can, but we're practical and recognize that sometimes issues come up. So how can we mitigate those and be prepared to deal with them? So high stake exam requirements, uh, they vary 
It's certainly going to vary depending on whether you're part of the uh, Common Core State Standard testing and doing Smarter Balance or PARC or your own uh, testing or perhaps a completely different organization. Some people are doing uh, MAPS testing with NWEA. So the specific requirements for util using the iPad do vary. They have some general, general standards or crossovers. Since I, the iPad uh, came out, we've seen each iOS bring new features and capabilities. iOS 6 brought us guided access. It was a terrific tool to use on a personal device, so you can hand it to a you know, younger student or a younger person. I remember handing my niece my uh, iPhone and put her in uh, monkey ball so she couldn't get into my email. Special ed teachers were utilizing it to uh, put a student in an app and uh, you know, stop them from wandering unnecessarily. Which iPad, you know, really it, it's, it's um, a matter of the size of the iPad. The iPad mini is really the, the one that isn't appropriate for most of these online testing. And it's because of the need for screen real estate. Some of them are recommending iPad 3s, but in many cases the iPad 2s still do work. It's a matter of testing and verifying with the specific uh, testing agency. Keyboards are pretty much a must for, <clears throat> excuse me, the higher, higher stakes exams so that we can retain that screen real estate. And a lot of the day-to-day -day, uh, usage, that's not necessary. The students are used to it. The apps they're using pretty much have uh, utilized the built-in apps. But it's when we get to the high stakes exams where we want to have that external keyboard. And while not necessarily required, Certainly some best practice has shown us that the wired keyboard really pays off. Uh, when you start to scale the environment and you have a lot of Bluetooth keyboards, everything from just making sure they're matched up correctly to the correct iPad is streamlined and simplified if you go with that wired keyboard. Recently, there's been some additional abilities when the iOS, with a recent update, to, to add some restrictions to the keyboard. Now, someone who's grown up, you know, utilizing a lot of the assistive technology that's been built into these devices, particularly the iPad and the prompting that I get from the keyboard, and as an adult appreciating those, when we get to the standardized test, it hasn't gotten to the point where those are approved on in all cases. So being able to restrict some keyboard features is an important aspect of conducting the exams and also realizing it may be different from one student to the next. Recent abilities to go into a into a MDM solution like the Casper Suite and be able to set some of these uh, restrictions easily for the time being that you're going to be conducting the exams is something that's now capable and the primary pieces of these keyboard restrictions that have uh, developed just recently that are configuration profiles or basically abilities to push settings out to iPads and then remove them. And the primary ones that just became available are to restrict the dictionary, spell check, autocorrect, and quick type. Caution here, what we can do is great. Should we, for, and it really depends on the, the testing you're going to do and the individual student. Some students will have that as an approved access. But what we're able to do, uh, I mentioned with the wired keyboard, and this is reduce the risk of failure in those situations and be able to use the iPad for exams but know that on a day-to-day -day basis, we're using it for the great learning environment that it can provide. However, we're not going to restrain students to have to go to a special location to take the exam. For instance, a computer lab, which isn't their normal environment. Being able to customize the device to utilize it during these exams allows it to also be used for the learning environment and, and, and create this uh, area this this area where students can come and feel comfortable because they're using the same technology they've been using day to day it's talked about the wired keyboard already there's a lot of uh, models that are out there the next feature and really the one to spend the most time on is this ability to lock into a secure app now I mentioned uh, this need on a day-to-day -day basis if you're giving a quiz but for high stakes exams it's an absolute requirement uh, preparing for those 
we want to we want to look at what method's going to work in the situation you have and many times it's a matter of the scale that is involved and the capacity to support that being able to get an iPad on the fly like I mentioned with iOS 6 into guided access uh, allows us to secure that device into that testing app now there are several methods that we could go ahead and use uh, the original method certainly was being able to move around the classroom and uh, run around in a way and basically touch each device the benefit of this is it doesn't require uh, significant technology involvement however it's just not really that practical on a large scale once you move beyond this guided access on an individual device we do need to realize as a prerequisite called supervision and that is a, a, a setting put on to the devices that uh, can be done either through the new device enrollment program that Apple's created or using Apple configurator and in usual cases device enrollment program works well with a one-to-one -one, and a lot of people using the shared model are using Apple configurator but either way supervision is put on once that's done then we can use other tools and we can still use Apple configurator to connect uh, a bunch of iPads to a computer use Apple configurator to lock it into a single app and then hand them out to students and on a small scale that's reasonable now we can use mobile device management like the Casper suite which not only does Macs and iPad management but the one of the capabilities that Apple's created is for mobile device management tools to to be able to push out a profile to lock into single app mode now another method that uh, I'm gonna spend some time on when I get into the demo and it really pertains to the specific apps that use a secure web browser built-in browser that have made the uh, autonomous single app mode or ASM that ability which I'll show in a little while now can set up if the app developer is created which pretty much you know the park and smarter balance apps have certainly done that so when you launch the app when the student logs in it does put them into guided access mode when they're finished the test they come back out and for those large-scale testing on those specific situations where they've created this it's a really useful model uh, it can be a seamless experience to secure the iPads for assessment and very little uh, overhead at the time and at the point of when you're doing the exams another method that uh, we've been promoting for a couple years at Jamf is to and it goes back to returning the tools uh, and putting them into the right hands is Casper focus which and while this is absolutely a solution for high stakes exams because in my mind it takes it back to the way we did this before it became digital now that it's a process teacher used to go ahead and get all the students ready for testing and during a certain hour of the day but have it have ability to adjust that um, hand out the test booklets let the students start so rather than relying on someone uh, managing a back-end server to either set something up or to be able to push out and then take turn off settings uh, we can allow a classroom teacher to actually go ahead from Casper focus which is a an additional piece to the Casper suite no extra cost or anything it's just tied in but it gives the teacher a few con management options one of is to switch devices into guided access or, or single app mode so the teacher from their own iPad can go ahead and select one or a group or the entire class and get all those students switched over and ready for the exam so whether you're using a smarter balance system or park or another system the teacher has that ability now if you're a Casper suite customer Casper focus comes with it and it's just a matter of setting that up uh, some people haven't gone to the extent of getting all of their teachers ready and up and running so they might rely on that back-end MDM uh, profile push or the the um, the ASAM that kind of uh, timed when the student launches the app feature and that's why I'm going to show all of those when we get going but what I really love about Casper focus is if I need to I can very easily free up a student that needs to leave my classroom and then that students able to just leave with that iPad 
Now, granted, with the uh, ASAM, you can create that same kind of environment. Uh, however, it really pertains to only to those specific apps that have created that when they developed that app. And, and just as important, imagine the next day students coming in and the teacher wanting to start and get a student going and uh, so they could finish the exam. And, and that's really the kinds of solutions you're looking for. And if the app has that autonomous single app mode, terrific. If it doesn't, and, and then other situations for quizzes or exams, Casper Focus really does provide that on the fly ability for a classroom teacher. And just quickly, uh, a little bit of the interface with it. Distributing the apps to students, you know, the, um, the method of getting these uh, apps into students, we can, uh, we can either put them available for students in something called self-service, or we can actually have them load automatically for students. And now one of the great profiles uh, that you can do is you can restrict so students cannot delete apps. So once you've got it on the iPad, and maybe you don't have this setting all the time, but you want to put that restriction on during the testing period so you don't have to worry about that app getting removed. So um, I'll show that when we jump into the demo part piece, but it, it's one of those things to reduce and mitigate those issues during the exam of a student deleting an app uh, accidentally or on purpose. You know, we've used Apple Configurator for years to get apps onto devices. And now, which, although I don't have an icon for it, we've got that ability to, to use device enrollment program to get devices, which allows easy ability with the Casper suite to get apps out there for students. So whether you're using Configurator to get your apps on, or you're using the mobile device management like the Casper suite, uh, we can easily get them onto students' devices. And as I mentioned with the, the piece about turning on or off that ability to delete an app, that necessarily isn't something you want all the time. So having this remote capability uh, within a device management system like the Casper Suite is, is really important. Now, the examples, um, I'm going to show a little bit of the demo in a few minutes, but you know, most of what we're talking about today, of course, is being able to securely conduct high stakes exams like Smarter Balance and Park for the Common Core State Standard Testing. And that really is important. And being able to do that, you now have the technology, whether it's uh, device management, uh, pushing a profile to lock to single app mode, or that autonomous ability, and or Casper Focus. What the others don't necessarily do is go beyond that when you want to do things like routine uh, quizzes and exams. And whether you're using, uh, sorry, whether you're using uh, TI Inspire to conduct a math, math quiz, um, a regular PDF where the students are using an editor, or um, Accelerated Reader, sorry, I had blanked out for a second, the far left one. Accelerated Reader is used by a lot of, uh, certainly customers of JAMP, on a day-to-day -day basis. And being able to put a student into that uh, on the fly as needed is, is a real critical resource uh, for teachers out there trying to transform their classroom. E-backpack, same kind of thing. Great for other resources, document round trip, but if you want to give an assessment or a quiz during the week, you know, you don't want to necessarily have to call IT and ask them to push a profile from the back end of the server. You certainly don't want to run around to each student's device. If a student teacher can do that right from their own iPad, it's quick, simple, and easy and easy to take the student out of that focus or that single app mode. The third concept that really begs for a, a faster, more on-the-fly ability in the classroom uh, beyond uh, the, the autonomous single app mode or back end are when you want to do formative assessments that for years we've known the check for understanding uh, you know, is, is such a valuable uh, skill to, 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 to use in the classroom. At the same time, you know, getting teachers to, to use wait time and try to get all kids to participate has been a challenge. So clicker systems have been around for a while, but they still present a little bit more uh, of a challenge when adopting. So with the iPad, you've got so many choices, whether it's Edmodo or Nearpod or eClicker, or I mentioned earlier, eBackpack, whatever response system you want to use on the fly in the classroom when it's most important for a teacher to be able to 
to realize they need to do a check for understanding or a redirection and, and with a group to be able to get them quickly to that response app, get the responses, and then let the students go back to what they need to be doing or go work with the students that needed some uh, greater instruction. Thinking of those abilities beyond the high stakes exams. And I'm going to go ahead and get into the Casper Focus aspect demo a little bit, but I do want to jump in and jump out of this presentation and go to uh, demo some of the, the new configuration profiles that uh, we have within the Casper suite, in addition to the uh, autonomous single app mode ability. Before I show you how to set up the restrictions that are frequently used for high stakes exams, I'm going to show you on the iPad I have displayed that those restrictions are not yet in effect. And while the camera isn't typically one of those restrictions needed, uh, it's a nice easy way to show you how smoothly and quickly these profiles can take effect. So on the iPad, you see that I have the camera app available to me. I'm going to go ahead and go into the notes app. It's a quick, easy way to show you that by opening the app, as soon as I start typing, well, in fact, before I even start typing, you see some prompts down right above the letters on the keys of some words that I might want to use. So that's predictive prompting. And I'm going, I'm trying to type the word tomorrow, and sure enough, it's available to me, and I could choose that to pop that in. Another option, if I started typing a line below, and I ignore these, you'll notice that it's implied or showing me that I spelt a word incorrectly. So one, I obviously have the predictive typing and I also have the spell check piece enabled. Let me delete that note. And now let me go into the Casper Suites Jamp Software Server. I'll let you see the uh, home screen of that iPad. Now who has access to this is really up to the institution. We're seeing uh, several institutions hand off some of these tasks uh, out of the uh, traditional IT department down to either a specialist within a school, perhaps the librarian, perhaps a a instructional technology staff member that can do some of these profiles because they really are just a process. It's not necessary to have high technical skills in order to accomplish this. What we do need to know is I can either choose up at the top to manage computers because Jamps managed computers for more than a dozen years. We have mobile devices and we have users. Users is significant because we do so much with assigning a particular person applications and access. I'm going to go ahead and go into mobile devices because this is where I need to go in to get to my configuration profiles. On the panel to the left, I have configuration profiles, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now I have some pre-created and if I do that, then I can just go in and perhaps assign iPads that I want to be ha have a particular restriction applied to. In this case, I need to create a new one. And I'm going to go ahead and name this test setup and exam settings. I don't need to do much more for what I'm about to do today. I could restrict this down to particular buildings. Now, in the column to the left, I have several types of profiles that I could send out. Everything from web clips to uh, single app mode if I wanted to to setting up someone's mail or Wi-Fi. I'm going to go into restrictions and configure. And use this section to restrict which apps, uh, device functionality, and media content are available to the user. Now, I still see that uh, tab to the left. And then you see several tabs to choose from functionality, application, and media. So functionality should already be highlighted. And you'll notice I see a long list of things that most of them all have a check mark next to, which means they are still allowed. I'll go ahead and uncheck use 
of camera simply for the demo. I like how fast the uh, camera just disappears and that really kind of emphasizes what happens here. Scrolling all the way down past all of these other options, at the very bottom are the new restrictions that Apple made available as profiles in a recent iOS update, and then Jamf is added into our Casper suite. So going from the very bottom up, we have allow definition lookup, then allow checking spelling, allow auto correction, and allow predictive keyboard. Notice these all say supervised because that is a prerequisite to be able to do this to the devices. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. But I haven't told it what iPads I want to have this profile or these restrictions to take effect to yet. So I need to go up next to options to scope. This allows me to choose the particular iPads. I'm going to have to click on edit because I because I had hit saved. Now I can certainly uh, target uh, mobile devices. I can choose all, which I definitely don't want to do this to. And keep in mind, you know, we want to, even if it was all fourth grade students, we would realize that some students, uh, because of their special needs, would be allowed to have some of the uh, these things that we've restricted to be used during exams. So I'm gonna go ahead and go on to add. I could stay on the mobile device tab and scroll down and selectively pick specific iPads. However, it's much easier to have a mobile device group set up, whether it's a smart group that's automatically bringing devices in or a static group where someone physically goes in and creates that list. So I have fourth grade exam day and I'll choose add. Scrolling down, I now need to hit save. And so I've picked some restrictions and I've applied it to a specific set of iPads. Click on done. And I give it a few seconds. And I'm going to pop in and then pop back out, see if I can get that page to refresh. And sure enough, I see it's completed for all three devices now. So, you'll notice on the iPad I have displayed that the camera is no longer available. That's a sure indication that this profile did take effect on this device. But just to dive in a little deeper, let's go back to the Notes app. Now if I start typing the word tomorrow, and first of all, I don't see the predicted words like I had seen in the past. And as I start typing, it's not giving me suggestions. And it's allowed me to spell something incorrectly and is not giving me any indication. So it's demonstrating to me that those profile restrictions have in fact taken effect. When I'm done with the testing, I can go back to this particular configuration profile. I don't have to delete the whole thing. I certainly could, but I'm just simply going to go into scope edit the scope, and I'm going to remove that set of iPads. And in a very short period of time, I should see the camera come back onto the device. Save it, and distribute to all devices. And I'm done. And I don't see the camera yet, but I'm just waiting for that push notification to come down to the device. Sure enough, not only did the camera came back, but you'll notice FaceTime and Photo Booth have also appeared. So now that student should be able to go back into Notes and have the predictive typing and the spell check ready to be used. Before I show you how to set up autonomous single app mode, let me show you on the iPad I have displayed that it is not currently in effect. I'll choose the Air Secure app, and simply by choosing it, I should be able to get out again by hitting the uh, Home button. And in fact, I am. 
Now, once somebody logs in, if ASAM is in effect, they won't be able to get out until they log out. So I'll try logging in. And since this is a demo test, I can simply hit sign in. At this point, I shouldn't be able to leave without logging out. If I press the home button, I am able to leave the app, which tells me ASAM is not in effect. I'll show a little bit more detail because if you try to launch this exam and you get all the way to taking a test, you should get an error saying you're not currently in single app mode. So I'll select a grade really quick to move along. Pick an exam. Skip. And now, at this point, if I tap Begin Test Now, if Guided Access was in effect, it would allow me to. I should get an error. And this app is smart enough to know that Guided Access is not in effect, so this test environment is not secure, and I'm able to get out all the way back and it prompts me back to the login screen. And as you can see with the home button, I'm able to get out of that app. So now we'll go ahead and configure the ASAM. I'll log in to the Casper Suites Jamp software server. And while I have uh, several options, I can manage my computers, work with my users. In this case, I need to go to my mobile device tab up at the top. And I'm going to go to the sidebar and choose Configuration Profiles. I have a list to choose from. I certainly could edit. I usually have them pre-made. And it's just a matter of uh, turning them on and off, adding devices to it. But I'll create a new Configuration Profile. And I'll give this a name of Exam. And for a description, it's ASAM. I could put in uh, more information, it's unnecessary at this time. I, I don't have a specific school or site identified. And while I have several options to choose from for configuration profiles, and you'll notice further down I have single app mode. That would be if I just wanted to uh, set a set of iPads to a specific app. However, to take advantage of ASAM, I need to go into restrictions and configure. Normally, you'd be on this first tab of functionality, and you could go down and you could uncheck, which would apply the restriction. For instance, allow use of camera, and there are some others. However, for this, I need to go into applications, because I'm going to restrict an application. So I click the application tab. And while I have some other choices to turn off, what's really important is at the very bottom, autonomous single app mode. Now. That's supervision, uh, sorry, supervised devices only. And I need to click on add. And then use a little search button here to go find the app that I want to add in. And here's my list of apps that are in the apps catalog. And there is the air secure test. I'll choose. It's picked it. I'll tap save inside that window. And I could hit save now, but I, I'm going to go ahead and go up to scope right away so I can tell it which iPads I want this profile to go out to. So under target tab, I could do um, all devices, which I definitely don't want to do. Specific mobile devices, and I'll click on the add button. Now, in the tabs I have, I could certainly just go down through a list of iPads and, and include them. However, I'm going to use mobile device groups because in advance, I went ahead and created a static group where I've added devices in already. Now, I could have used a smart group. However, I went ahead and just added some of the devices I have, and they're all set in this fourth grade exam day. I'll click Add and scroll down. Tap on Save. And now I have uh, set the profile restriction to the particular app, and I've assigned it or scoped it to a specific set of iPads. I click done. Now typically this only takes a few seconds. Uh, what's happening is the Jamp software server 
Casper Suite server is communicating with Apple's push notification and then getting that information down to the device. Usually it only takes a few seconds and I, um, the devices are on, they're ready to be communicated with. So I'll go find this and right now I see that so far I've got, uh, it hasn't completed with any devices and it's got three that are scoped in. So I'll give it a few more seconds and I should be seeing this um, reapply pretty soon. And let's see, I'm just gonna tap into that. Get it to update. Oh, so now I see that in fact one device has been completed and the other two are still remaining. So let me try this device I have right here. I'll click on the Air Secure test app. And as soon as I tap sign in, I should know whether or not the uh, ASAM profile has taken effect. Because right now the student should be able to still get out. If they accidentally go into the app, it's not an issue. They definitely can get back out. Once they tap sign in, they shouldn't be able to press the home button and get out. So in fact, pressing the home button is not doing me any good. I'm going to go ahead and try to initiate the test just to show that I, I will no longer get that error message. It will let me perform an exam. Select a grade, seventh grade students. I use the math and select. And if I scroll down to where it lets me begin test, this is the point where in the past we got an error message. And this iPad has been allowed to go ahead and initiate the exam. Now currently, if the student tries to hit the home button, they're not going to get out. They are locked into guided access or single app mode. The only way for them to get out at this point is either for that profile to be removed, which we don't need to, simply if the student ends the exam, and because they've made it so far, they're gonna to have to go through a few steps, actually submitting to the point that they had completed. Yes, I'm sure. And once they tap log out, they should now be able to press the home button and get out of that app. So ASAM is in effect, and over the next however long I want to keep that profile, anytime someone goes into that app and goes past the point of logging in, they will be automatically put into guided access. I would now like to show you a demo of another way to do this that puts the tools right in the classroom teacher's hands, Casper Focus. So I'm going to bring up another iPad, and this is my teacher iPad. And I'm going to choose Casper Focus. Now we have a full webinar video on Casper Focus. We have eight two minute videos showing each feature. So the concepts here, if you're interested, um, you can certainly bounce out and go take a look. Really what I want to show is if I have a class without having to worry about the back end management as a teacher, I can go ahead and by going to the bot, I have a class selected. Um, one of the uh, iPads is not in use, so I have it excluded. I have four iPads ready to go. I have a very small class sitting here. I can go down to the bottom where it says focus and I can do apps or websites. So again, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you have a website you wanna lock students to for testing, it's available to you. So under apps, there's my air secure test. I choose it and let's see how quickly this, how well this demo goes. Uh, there, my one, uh, my one student's device is over in it. Uh, I actually have a device that has a little error message, and uh, that is, it says, focus device on the test app may not have installed, and that's, that's a normal error you will see um, because that particular iPad had that app installed just a moment ago. So it's gonna prompt me to go walk over to that student and, and tap their home button and see that, oh, they are in fact locked in the app. And that's that concept of a classroom teacher getting that um, uh, information in their hands to know to either go back and re try to lock that student or that there might be an issue. But now I have this student. In fact, I'll prove that the, it is in fact locked because I'm pressing the home button. It's not going anywhere. If I go ahead and go to sign in, I should be able to get a little further than I tried last time. 
because remember, it will not let me begin the test unless I am in fact in guided access. And now I say begin test. And in fact, it's going to let the test start because the student is not, uh, sorry, is in guided access. So without relying on that back end piece, Now, I'm going to go ahead and release my students. Let's say this particular student needs to get up and leave. I can go ahead and choose that student, remove focus, and they're actually going to get, if they try to proceed in this test, they're actually getting bumped out. Now, I would have had the student log out, but that just goes to show that guided access, in fact, is no longer in effect. Since I'm already here, I'll go ahead and show you that Let's say I want to, um, instead of the high stakes exam, I just want to do a math quiz. Same concept. Find an app that does not have autonomous single app mode. TI Inspire, I want to give a math quiz. But I want to know that the kids are secure. And as a day-to-day as a -day teacher, this is really important to me. Uh, student's going to go in and take a test. Here's the test I'm going to have the student take. Now this particular test certainly has the standard uh, types of questions that they, um, you're used to seeing as far as uh, multiple choice and things like that. But with some of these apps today, you can have some transformational activities where students are actively manipulating objects to solve problems versus just the multiple choice. And this is an example of where we could end up being in a few years with our high stakes exams. However, it takes the power of the iPad to do this kind of thing for the student to actually be able to manipulate with their own hands and create and solve problems. Or having, let's see, this particular quiz does not have um, for them to uh, to uh, re-graph something, but you get the idea. This student is in the quiz, the test, and once they're done, the teacher can go ahead and free up the entire class or one student at a time as they finish. The last one I was talking about before was formative assessment. Classes are working, they're, on, they're working on projects, tables are, are actively busy, engaged in what they're doing, and the teacher simply wants to quickly ask them a question without having to take the time to get the whole class to stop and look up at them. They could be doing it from sitting at a table working with a group of students. I want to send all my students to uh, Edmodo, for instance, and I've put a, in Edmodo, I put a question out there to all the students. On the fly, formative assessment, I'm switching all the students over to Edmodo if they're logged in. Um, that's actually a rather old question I asked. In fact, you can see how old that one was. Uh, however, I didn't even have to get up to stop the class. The students respond. As I see the students have answered the questions, it gives me the information I needed, and I'm able to free them up. So I'm not suggesting that for high stakes exams, it's absolutely the need, but I am suggesting for the in-class moment by moment opportunity for formative and then even summative assessments. Uh, Casper, Casper Focus being just an extension to the Casper Suite uh, puts the tools in the right people's hands. Keep in mind we have the ability to, to uh, reduce the high involvement of IT on a day-to-day -day basis when you're conducting the exams. And we've mitigated the security concerns because we've shown that the guided access single app mode can work in multiple kinds of situations, but without someone really having to be there and, and like I said, a very high involvement by IT. And allow the ability to practice and use this during instruction rather than bringing students into a unique environment for that exam day. You're using the device, which in time, the iPad that the schools have chosen as a great learning tool, testing apps will eventually be able to take advantage of the affordances of the iPad. Right now, they're having to limit themselves to the, the breadth of technology that's out there for consistency's sake. However, the potential is there to have these enhanced question types and take full advantage, just like we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and so that we can make exam day like any other day. 
not only using the same technology and having the students be comfortable, but eventually using exam types that take on the same kind of transformational instructional abilities as we have on a day-to-day -day basis. You can find more information at JAMF. You could jump out to somebody as a chat if you want immediate information or you want a more in-depth demo or trial. You certainly can go to JAMF and find all of our pre-existing webinars that will show you in greater detail and more technical uh, than I certainly am ever going to get on DEP and volume purchase and uh, distributing apps. And you can, uh, you're welcome to email me. Thank you very much for taking the time today to watch this presentation.